Fast SSDs have their advantages, but there's a couple of things they can't do, and that's why you need one of these. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. I love tech, and when I order a piece of tech that I like, I'm looking out that window for the postman to arrive like a kid waiting for Santa. I hear a car door close, I'm off to the window. Is it kind of sad? Sure, but I'm a nerd, and I own it. Now, not every piece of tech has that new toyness to it that we get really excited about. Sometimes a piece of tech is just something I really need, something you have to invest in that doesn't necessarily excite you, but that will make your life so much easier. And that's what a NAS drive is to me. So I'm a content creator, obviously, and creating content means working with large files and lots of them. I mean, I'm shooting most of my stuff on the Canon R5 and it's an absolutely fantastic camera, but if you wanna film in high quality 4K, that thing spits out massive files. And the thing is, once I finish a project, I don't really wanna get rid of any footage. I used to keep just the final product and dump everything else, but there have been so many occasions where I wished I'd kept the footage so I could use it again in a certain project, but I couldn't because I deleted it to save some space. So I decided to keep all my footage, but what happens then is that you burn through hard drives like crazy. I used to use these little SSDs to store my footage, and I like those very much because they're very fast and you can edit straight off the drives, but if you also use them for storage, they will fill up so fast and these things are not cheap. So the next best thing is an external hard drive or an HDD drive like this one by Lassie. Now there's nothing wrong with these drives. You can get a bunch of storage for relatively little money, but these drives are very, very slow. And because they have moving parts, they can be pretty fragile. And if it breaks, all of my footage is gone. So you'd have to buy two of these to back everything up in case one of them breaks, which is not only very labor intensive and tedious, but you're also gonna end up with a massive pile of these hard drives, which means you're gonna have to come up with a system to categorize them so you know what footage is on which drive. And if you need a particular piece of footage, you need to find the drive, hook it up to your computer, take the footage, swap it out for another drive. You get my point, it's a mess. And that is assuming you work alone. If you work with other people like clients or you're working with different editors, you're gonna have to find a way to get that footage to them. And that is where a NAS drive comes in. By the way, I don't know if it's NAS or NAS, I'm just gonna stick with NAS. A NAS drive solves all of these problems and offers you a bunch of little extras on top. Now, the good people at Asus Store sent me their Locker Store 2 to try out, which is a two-bay NAS and I have to say, this thing has changed my workflow so much. It makes my life and the people I work with so much easier. So what is a NAS drive anyway? NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, and that's exactly what it is. It's a bunch of hard drives connected to a network and or the internet. But of course, there's much more to it than that. So let's just have a look at what's in the box, what it looks like, how it works, and then we'll talk about some of the really cool things it brings to the table. So in the box, we have the NAS enclosure itself and some cables to power it and connect it to the ethernet. On the back, you see the ethernet and USB ports, but also HDMI, because this thing is basically a small PC and it can function as a standalone media unit as well. All you have to do is take off the cover, which is secured by only three screws. And this is where you can place your NVMe SSD memory. And because I'm using the SSD for cache purposes only and not storage, I'm placing a relatively small drive of only 500 gigs. I'll get back to that in a second. Then we have the two empty bays for the actual hard drives. I'm using two eight terabyte Seagate drives. Make sure you secure them with the screws that came with the NAS, pop them back in and lock them in place and voila, you've got yourself a NAS system. Now, the reason why I have two identical drives of eight terabyte is because I'm using them in a RAID 1 configuration. And what that basically means is that one of these drives backs up the other one so that if one of them fails, the other one will still have all the data on it. And then you can swap out the faulty drive with the new healthy one and you can copy all of your data onto that drive. This drastically reduces the chances of you ever losing all of your footage. Both drives would have to die at the same time, which is not very likely. But of course, if you wanna be really safe, you can also purchase backup cloud storage and keep a copy of your files there as well. Asus Store has an app called Control Center, which makes all of that very easy. I could also choose to just use the eight terabyte drives individually, so you would have effectively 16 terabytes of storage, but not having that redundant drive to back up the other one 
kind of defeats the purpose of having a NAS drive in the first place. Now, Isami pop in some NVMe SSD memory, and that's going to provide cache memory. The hard drives inside the NAS are not as fast as SSD drives, but this NVMe SSD memory speeds up the process by storing frequently used data on the SSD so you can access your data much, much faster. What makes the ASOSOR NAS more interesting than most other NAS systems is the fact that you can also use the NVMe slot as storage. The slot is actually double-sided, so you could stick in two equally sized NVMe SSDs and have them do the same thing as your HDD drives inside the NAS. And that makes this a very flexible system. By the way, I'm using eight terabyte drives, but of course you can buy bigger or smaller drives as well, depending on your needs. Storage is never cheap, so you can start out small and upgrade whenever you need more. You can get these NAS drives in all kinds of sizes. You can get a locker store with as many as 10 bays. Imagine the beast you can build with that. And you can also connect the NAS drives to each other and keep growing your system that way. One of the main purposes of the NAS is security. We can't be cautious enough these days and storing everything in the cloud is a risk. And so having your own little server is very useful. And that leads me to today's sponsor, AP Lens. I'm sure you've more than once received an email or a message with a fishy looking URL inside asking you for suspicious things like your login details. Phishing attacks happen to everyone and anyone, and there isn't a whole lot you can do about it to protect yourself. Antivirus programs can't save you, and a firewall can't stop a phishing attack either because the websites look so legit and the firewalls won't recognize anything suspicious. So what do you do if you want to click on the link, but you're not 100% sure if it's safe? Well, that's where AP Lens comes in. AP Lens is a remote disposable browser, which lets you check if a URL is legit. Remote because the website and browser never touch your disk and disposable because all data, cache and info are destroyed once you close the AP Lens browser. The coolest thing is that it creates a PDF of the website behind the URL so you can actually have a look at what's on the website without actually going onto the website. Also, AP Lens provides even more privacy protection than a VPN because no cookie is ever placed on your machine. So if we take my website as an example, you can see the server location, it's New York because I'm hosted on a platform, and it's totally safe. There are no files you auto-download when you click on my URL. You can then open the website in a virtual browser, which gives you more info. You can see that there are some third-party cookies, YouTube related, but there is no matching phishing domain. AP Lens is totally free to check any URL and you can click your way down to two levels on a website. If you then decide you need to explore even further, you can purchase credits to do so. All right, so what makes this NAS drive so useful is that you can access it wherever you are and you can also give other users access to it, which is great if you do in fact work with other people. The Locker Store has a control center app, which is very intuitive. It lets you control the entire NAS. Like here, I can determine who has access. There's of course a file system and backup options. There's an activity monitor so you can check your system's health and much, much more. I won't go into too much detail about the control center because I could do a whole video on that. And if that wasn't enough, it even has its own app store so you can further expand what you can do with this thing. And the best part is that it also comes with a mobile app. Guys, if you're into creating content or you have a small business or you need to store and share large files for whatever reason, this has been a real game changer for me and I can highly recommend it. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.